Hello, this is Joe and welcome back to the channel. So tonight I'm gonna to actually be doing some recalibrating for PhD2 and running some PEMPRO, uh, PET curves and stuff like that. So I'm not gonna be doing a whole lot of imaging and more testing and stuff. Uh, but that's not really what the video is. I was just, that's what I'm gonna be doing tonight. The video really is, is that um, I was approached by my good friend, Mike Asbury from Virginia. And he wanted to do a collaboration with me. He approached me uh, in the middle of January, which right after I got my mount, and he wanted to know if I wanted to do the headphones nebula. And I had never shot that before, so I thought, hey, yeah, why not? Um, I'll check that out. And so what I was doing while I was testing my mount, I was actually imaging the headphones nebula. It was high up in the sky. Uh, near the horizon and unfortunately because of that and when I first got my mount my deck wasn't quite right and so I was getting some little horizontal stars but it actually turns out that Mike uh, wasn't completely collimated he had got the Ocal camera that uh, he saw on AstroQuest 1's channel Kurt had done a video on it and it looks really good because you could collimate in the middle of the day but unfortunately he didn't really something happened I'm not sure if it was the camera or or what it was but it, he followed all the instructions and he thought he had a really good collimation and then I guess he didn't so he had some issues I had some issues and together we actually still put our data together but I'm going to go over that in a bit uh, I'm going to get started moving my scope around and stuff while I'm talking but uh overall I think it came out really good and so I wanted to go back and I, I wanted to do a video on it because I thought that it was worthy of a video the image came out pretty good in my opinion I haven't seen a lot of headphone nebula images I don't really see many at all so I really thought hey this kind of goes with the incredible image uh, nebulae you're not imaging kind of thing but um, also a collab and so it's really cool and I'm going to go over all the gear that I'm going to be using. Uh, I'm going to be, well, that I used because I've already actually taken all the images. So we're kind of going back in time about two weeks while I was doing testing on my mount. But what I was, I was still using all the gear that you see here, the 294 MM Pro camera, uh, the Astrodon filters, and a Chroma O3 filter for the O3. Now I did mine in HOO. And, I, and so did he. So we only had two sets of masters to worry about, which made it kind of nice. Um, I've also got uh, the Celestron OAG and the 0.7 reducer, which brings my focal length to 1,422 millimeters. And I was using the Edge HD8, which I have on the mount now, and of course the Chem 120 mount. It just at the time was broken and now it's fixed. <laughs> so. It was a challenge to, to get everything, but but it was a it was a good challenge, and I still got some decent data, good enough to make a pretty decent image, I think. So I'm gonna go over all of Mike's gear as well. And here's Mike with his setup. It's very similar to mine, actually. He's got the Edge HD8 with the Celestron OAG and 0.7 reducer. He's riding on top of an EQ6R Pro, but the big difference that he has compared to me is that he's got the ASI 2600 MM Pro, which is a much nicer camera. And even though we were only using hydrogen and oxygen filters, he does have the three nanometer Antlia filters, and I was very impressed with them in his image. I didn't see any haloing of any kind. And actually, because of him, and also Glenn from the Astroglobe channel, I had decided to go ahead and order some Antlia filters to go along with my upcoming 2600 MM Pro myself. So I wanted to just a shout out to Glenn and also thank you Mike for uh, showing me that these filters are really nice filters. I appreciate that. You could also see that Mike has another rig in the back. I believe it's a Z61, and so he uses that for his wide field while he uses the Edge HD for more narrow work. The Headphones Nebula lies pretty much northeast of all of the normal winter targets. As you can see here in Stellarium, uh, most of the winter targets are right around in this area here. And so it's off a little bit 
to itself and we're just going to zoom in and we have to zoom in quite a bit because it's a very low magnitude and very small target and it's in the Lynx constellation it's about 1600 light years away and I believe that the star that's in the center is only got a magnitude of 16.8 so it's a very very dim star so just gonna jump in pics and sight real quick I wanted to show you the masters that Mike sent me here's his hydrogen alpha and it's pretty good he's using the 2600 mm pro on his edge HD and then here's his oxygen 3 so we got some pretty good data and some pretty good detail in here again it's a it's a very small target but it's it was great to work with and his stars he's even though he was out of collimation his stars don't look too bad at all and much easier to fix than than the issues that I ran into um, so we'll just put those aside and I'll show you what I came up with uh, here's my hydrogen alpha and I want you to notice that my this is uncropped by the way but my darks uh, were starting to fail at this point and the darks that I took back in May uh, had been working good up until just a few images ago actually where I've had to take some new darks but you can see that the dark was failing and I thought that I would um, go ahead and recalibrate all these here's my oxygen um, and because of the meridian flip I've got this on both sides now and I thought well we might end up cropping in I don't know but I might have to take these because this comes out pretty far out but I did get quite a bit of detail uh, it, especially in the hydrogen so I was pretty excited anyway and at this point at this part right here where we're zoomed in you couldn't even tell really that I had any issues with my dark frames so I went ahead and just put them together for fun to see what we came up with uh, without redoing my darks and this is our hydrogen alpha and basically instead of redoing my darks I decided that we were going to have to cut the square about right here in this general area and so if I came in just a little bit and come straight down from there uh, with the whole thing tilted about 20 degrees to the left I would have I would miss this and and this part didn't come out too bad and now on my oxygen I had about the same issue so um, but cropping it seemed to have worked just fine and I had no issues so I didn't really redo my darks for this particular image but these are just some of the things that you run into when you're doing collaborations and then and uh, everybody's got a little issue here and there and it just all kind of compounds on you um, I'm really liking this O3 I really love the the detail uh, we got for lack of a better word the shock waves from the from the uh, star all the way out past here and around this area here and uh, I thought that was really cool that, that we were able to get that much detail especially in in the oxygen so I hope you like this video. If so, please go ahead and hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below to Mike's Instagram page. Uh, he doesn't have a YouTube channel, but he's got a pr really good and interesting Instagram profile. So I I'm sure that he would love to see more visitors to that. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.